boom boom how's it going how's it going welcome to another channel where we talk about anything and everything around property in this video here where we are we are going to be covering again everything and everything around property but in particular today i want to speak to rent to rent is it profitable number one can you do and how can you actually do it so this is actually going to be a video that is going to speak to on how you can start renting your first rent to rent yes i did say that how to actually first how to how to rent your first rent to rent and rent it out that makes sense doesn't it? yeah i think so too so why would you want to rent a property instead of buying the property let's get that out of the way so the thing is that people when we jump in into something that is fairly new i think i always say that don't jump in to commit too soon before you actually understand whether this is something that you want to do so for this reason i think that the opportunities of finding rental properties that you can then in turn rent out to other people i think it's a noble idea for people that are not so sure whether renting whether buying a property is for them or whether actually just owning a property is for them you are testing the water but without testing the water you're losing oppor the opportunity where you own the property so you're losing out on the appreciation and obviously you're losing out on the growth of the property uh, on there and obviously all the tax benefits that come with that property you're missing out because you're not the owner but I also want to stress the fact that it is also of extremely importance that you get to understand you before you can start to commit because there's all these benefits. Maybe property is not for you. So how do we actually start with knowing or understanding how to rent a property for the purposes of renting it out? Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is that when we are finding these properties, it is of great importance that we find properties that are conducive to also rent them out. So what do I mean by that? There are so many landlords out there that are just looking for an amount of money. So they are not looking to make profit. Uh, these people could be elderly. These people could be retired um, investors and things like that. So they understand the whole concept of owning properties, but they're not willing to manage it. So there's an opportunity for you where you can actually approach such kind of people, such kind of landlords, and you can offer them a set amount of money. And that money now comes through to them consistently without actually managing the entire property. Now, that's where you come in and that's where the profit is going to be you want to make sure that if you are going to be if you are going to be renting the property let's just say it is a block of flats of round about four units and with this is an example that we're giving up on this property in the area you can see that there are too many two beds that are on the market for around about five thousand rand and as and when they come in, they are hot cakes. Can you go into the landlord and you can offer him maybe 3,000 rand, which means that is 12,000 rand. And maybe can you actually say to the landlord, hey, I'm going to pay you four, four months in advance of the rent. And out of that, you can then, I can then start paying. So at any given time, you've been paid upfront. If I'm a retired landlord, it's a very good deal to me. I am happy to actually do that because I know for a fact that I've got some money that's coming in consistently. In turn, what are you going to do? You are going to take the same property, make it look pretty, and thereafter you're going to rent it, let's say, for 5500 Now, you are now banking round about... 20,000 right you are banking 20,000 remember we say the market is for 5,000 so you're not going to advertise it for 5,000 because some people are going to come to you and say want to negotiate so I'm going to advertise for 5,500 and in this case some people will negotiate and I'm going to lend up into 5,000 
And if I get 5,200, that's a bonus. If I get to 5,300, my 300 rand is a bonus. Out of it, I'm going to pay 12,000. 12,000 subtract that from 20,000, how much is that? That's a whooping 8,000 rand. But you're not going to get 8,000 rand. You also need to consider the fact that you might not have a tenant in, in one point or the other. So for that reason, you might actually want to save some money away. But let's go back to the contract before we get excited around, oh, you can make some money. Let's go back. It is of extreme importance that you discuss with the landlord that you are renting the entire building for the purposes of renting it out. Your contract needs to give you that leeway. If your contract doesn't give you that leeway, there is a great problem that you might end up yourself into. Can you do this with a um, one house? Can you do this with a block of flats? Can you do this? You, you can do this with any form of a property. The point that I'm trying to make here is that you are renting low and you are renting out high. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. The contract needs to allow for you to do this. What are some of the other opportunities that you can do a normal rent, but then fetch a higher income on your rental? You can try another strategy, which is Airbnb, which I've spoken to extensively on this channel. Or you can also talk, you can also do the same rent to rent. You're renting normal, but you're renting out to student accommodation. Why would you want to do that? Because student accommodation, they kind of like tend to pay per bed, not per room. So you could be renting per room, but you are renting out per bed. Potentially you have two beds in there. Potentially you have three beds in there. Do you see the drift? I hope you do. Now let's go back to the fact that, number one, your contract allows you to rent, to rent, to pass on the rent. To rent to rent but who is obliged for this initial rent you are okay so let's stress that out in your contract it needs to be very clear as well on who is going to be paying for rates take rates and taxes who's going to be doing maintenance and all of those things it is things that you can do a give and take with your landlord because if you do that then your landlord remember he could be a retired landlord so if you're going to be doing maintenance and some of those things, potentially you can now start chipping away from 3,000 even to maybe 2,000 because you're maintaining the property. What else can you do to give your landlord comfort? Can he come in at a regular time to check in the property? Can you have meetings on the property? All of those things. Who pays for the insurance? Should you pay for the insurance? Should you? You can see there is so many things that you can start doing now to give you the leeway that you want. In a, but in, in a nutshell, what I'm basically saying is it's okay to go and rent out. Whether you're a seasoned investor, whether you're a new investor, it doesn't matter. There is a little bit of money. This strategy is 100% going to help you from a cash flow perspective not from growing your asset but it can also help you to grow your asset if you use the cash flow correctly so you can use the cash flow and then now jump in on the same amount of money to buy your own properties using the bank's money my name is tj it's been great hanging out with you i'm trusting that this information has been of great importance to you and you have enjoyed it and if you haven't, if you've never subscribed to our channel, yes, if you've never subscribed to our channel, now is the time to subscribe and hit that button. I'll check you out on the next video. It is ITJ.